Hello and welcome back to Volumes. In today's episode, I spoke with my good friend Sarah on what it's like growing up Jewish. Please enjoy. Recording. Excellent. Okay. So, Sarah. Yes. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Tell me a little bit about yourself. So, my name is Sarah. Um, I am a content creator. I mostly specialize in photography and videography. Um, I'm from Glasgow. Um, yeah. Awesome. There you go. And you're here to talk about what subject specifically? I'm here specifically to talk about how I was raised. Because I was raised, not not going to say non-conventionally, but, you know, just differently to a lot of people. Because I was raised Jewish. And how was that for you? In, in the sense... <laughs> in a nutshell? Yeah. And in, in if you just generalise it in a few words. To me, normal. Until I, re- until I realized the outside world. No, I say the outside world. I wasn't like contained. Yeah. But until I realized other things. But you, were you contained to some degree? Didn't you say you went to a Jewish school? Uh, yeah, I went to a Jewish primary school. That's that, quite contained. There's only one in Scotland. Funnily enough, nowadays it's been combined with a Catholic school. So it's like okay. it's like a half Jewish, half Catholic <laughs> school nowadays. Because like, there's not enough of us. How does that work out? Do you know anything about it now? No, because I mean, I, I left primary school a significant amount of years ago. Yeah, fair enough. I, like, I've been told different things, but because like, I don't want to jump to assumptions because I don't actually know. But um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was interesting going to like a religious school. Um, because so I went, what, what does that entail? Like, do you have classes specifically that only jewish people would experience mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yes so we had the normal classes and then we had um i'm trying to think how to put it in like an english in like an english term because these are all in hebrew because obviously jewish people speak hebrew so we had, we had a hebrew class obviously i think we had that three times a week actually um so like my hebrew like well, at a point must have been pretty good i mean i think i'm like pretty rusty but i can still read it and slightly write it, just not. Can you give us a little preview? No. Oh. I don't want to embarrass myself, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, so we had Hebrew classes. We had a class called Kodesh, which was kind of learning about. Um, so we have the Torah, mm-hmm. learning about that. And that's what that class yes, completely considered. Yes. Yeah, so we learned okay. about because in the Torah you read a different. You know how in the Bible you read like a different part every week? Does it work like that for churches? Like neither of us went to church. We have no idea. I don't know why I'm looking at you, <laughs> but like, yeah, every week we have like a different portion that we read. I guess portion is a good way to put it. Right. And we learned about that. So we learned about all the almost I, like in English, you would get a book and you have to read a chapter yeah, yeah. a week. No, 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 no that, that's exactly what it's right. like. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, what was it like the school? Good. Uh, yeah, I guess very small. Do you have any like? Do you think, what do you think about sort of like a segregated school like that yeah i'm way against it really for sure like because of personal experience yeah i guess so like growing up in like going to one of these schools and the whilst living in like it would, i think it would be totally fine see if i lived in somewhere like israel where like there's lots of jewish people yeah. or even in the states where there's lots of jewish people right it would have been fine but because i think that it was in glasgow it yeah. didn't work because there was only a hundred people in the school classes that that's nursery up to primary seven and like i there's so much going on in the outside world i didn't actually know about so like i thought christmas was on 26th until (laughs) like literally until i was 11 years old which is terrible but um the truth (laughs) so growing up like christmas was definitely not something that was celebrated even now even now to be honest no like there's this term christmas christmas tree juice you know, some Jewish people do, do, yeah, do yeah, Jewish have right. Christmas trees, but never have. All right. Um, so then after primary, mm-hmm. what what is what was your experience of being a Jew like then? Mm. Also, is, is that what you would refer to a Jewish person as, just a Jew? Like, or is it a I, Jewish person? I, just Jewish. Just what's, just like, well, Jew. what's like being Jewish. Because right. like Jew kind of like... Got, seems to have a really it's got, strong it's got some it's got some negative connotations for sure yeah. um so after secondary school let's no after primary school more other um so i went to like a normal non-denominational i think that's the word yeah right non-denominational secondary school uh which was fine like it was i found it so weird so i you in my primary school you had to wear a skirt 
and then when you got secondary school like there was option for trousers i was like so excited you know because like <laughs> for trousers um that was fun. all right that was fun yeah it was it was just interesting like going somewhere there was other people because i like outside of school you just mix with the people you met in school in primary school especially you know and that was only jewish people so solely i only mixed with jewish people for like 12 12 years yeah primary school 12 years well like well like from zero zero up to 12 right yeah yeah, yeah. you know it was like solely i didn't had very few non-jewish friends actually like very few so so would you say like primary school didn't really prepare you for what you did like what comes when you go to high school it was almost like getting um, smacked in the face. You're like, this is a whole new world. Like, yes and no. Because, like, I again, I wasn't, like, segregated from the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. But, like, Respect part that. stuff that, like, like, celebrating Christmas in school, like, what we did in in my high school was, like, normal for everyone else. But I was just like, w- like, what? Like, mm-hmm. it was it was cool. I th- thought seeing a Christmas tree in school was really cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Which is such, like, a, such like a normal thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I went to, like, I went in public, so, like, I obviously had seen Christmas trees, and, uh-huh. you know, but in just in that school environment, it was just a bit, like, wow, weird, you know? Is there, what's the equivalent to Christmas in, uh, as, a, as a Jewish person? Um, well, we have Hanukkah, which is... Is that as Christmassy as Christmas? No, like, it's, it is and it's not, because it, it falls the same time as Christmas, usually, like, around December-ish mm-hmm. time. Um, so it's like a w- winter, winter festival, I guess. And as a do you put up trees and or, or is there anything you decorate specific well we the... have the the hanukkah which is like i'm sure most people have seen it it's got like nine nine little branches and mm-hmm. then you you light the candles one because hanukkah lasts for eight, eight nights basically it's a story of um back in the day in the temple some people came in to destroy it and there was a little little light left and it lasts for eight days Right. So we have eight days of Hanukkah, which is eight days of presents, which is great when you're like five. But so there's like a lot of presents and stuff going on. Yeah. So it's quite Christmassy. Yeah, so it's Christmassy in a sense. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's maybe a strange question, but how Jewish are you? Okay, so honestly, like this is a great question. Like I actually really like being asked this because <laughs> I have the perfect response to it. Because I'm like, I'm Jewish. <laughs> like that's the only way I can think. Because like... <laughs> culturally like i'm really proud of like my heritage because mm-hmm. i think you have to be coming from a religion that's been so heavily oppressed in yeah. previous years and then now you still just still a lot of oppression going on um but religiously it just doesn't align with my way of life really right so you don't go uh, and pray and, and no you don't no. go to like a place of prayer no i don't know don't go to synagogue haven't been in Oh, a very long time. <laughs> like a very, very, very long time. No, it just doesn't fit in with what what I choose to do and how I choose to live my life, you know? What's the experience of going to a synagogue like? I mean, I've... <laughs> to me, like, it's normal because yeah. I've never been to any other place of worship before. Like, I don't really know what a church service is like. Um, a bit odd, if I'm being honest. It's pretty yeah. strange, yeah. Yeah. But I, I didn't grow up going to that. Sure, so sure. So when I went so, for the first time, it was about... Yeah, it would just be a little bit alien. A little bit strange, yeah. yeah. for sure. Um, well, it's different to church, for sure. I just know that from speaking to people who have been to church in the way that the men and women are segregated so they don't sit together. Mm-hmm. So basically, I grew up an Orthodox Jewish person. Mm-hmm. Um, there's You can be Orthodox or you can be Reformed. If you're Reformed, it's... it's a bit more strict. No, right? Reformed is a little more relaxed. Oh, okay, right. So, so like, so, the, so men, men and women sit together, families sit together. Oh, okay. The service is in English and there's like a... So there are like priest person is called a rabbi mm-hmm. you can get women rabbis in reformed judaism but you definitely couldn't and in orthodox no right. it's very very so as an as orthodox uh, more sort of what it was traditionally like yes right yes um yeah so men and women sit apart in the synagogue i grew up going to there was just a partition between but i've been synagogues where women sit upstairs men right. sit downstairs so everything's happening downstairs the women sat upstairs, um, and I guess as a as a woman, which was, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, as as a woman or whatever, um, it was better because like you could talk to your friends and stuff upstairs, not downstairs. So you know that was better. But um, yeah, and you just basically sit and listen to someone talking in Hebrew for a couple of hours. Sit down, stand up. Sit down, stand up. Yeah. 
literally it. It's not that exciting. <laughs> like, not gonna lie. So your uh, your book of prayer is the Torah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sure. So yeah. Have you read it? No, women aren't allowed to touch the Torah at all. No. So a Torah is like it's it's like a but, uh, it's, it's like a scroll, right? Uh huh. Um, have you ever seen a photo of it? Yeah, I think uh, our school had one yeah. once, and you had to touch it with things yeah yeah so you have like the wee it's like a little golden pointer called a yad right i think yad that sounds about right i mean even if you're wrong i can't prove you're wrong hopefully it sounds right yeah it's a little like pointy finger thing and you like read because we read right to left in hebrew right yeah um so women are allowed to touch that so i've never read from it but if i was to be born a guy and had a bar mitzvah yeah i would have read from it is there a female equivalent to a bar mitzvah uh, there's bat mitzvahs, but in Orthodox Judaism, it's not really a thing. It's 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 like a thing for the 21st century. It's like right, a okay. present party, you know. Right. Um. Yeah. So there's that. Uh. So I mean, yeah, I've never read from the Torah, but we have the. Our, our, I mean, that that's like the giant scroll that's actually kept in synagogue, and then we've got siddurs, which are like actual books, and that just has like prayers and stuff written in it, which you do read from, which right. everyone has. Like I've got quite a few at home. So is is that almost is that sort of like a what's the word I'm looking for like a more uh it's it's easier it's, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. as yeah so you, like you just have them on demand yeah and, so pretty much every Jewish person probably has a couple right. in their house so there's no rules or regulations to touching that you can um, just use no, it no you read use it. it and then you when you're finished with it you close it and kiss it let's that, really yeah yeah. Again, see, you know, I'm saying these things, it comes across quite alien to me because it's been so long, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. All of it comes off really alien to me because I don't, I've never met a Jewish person before you mm. and it, everything you've told me so far it blew my mind. I thought this is so diversely different. Sure, sure, sure. I have never once picked up a book and kissed it after uh, reading it. Yeah. Well, and I mean, that's interesting to me. It's, yeah, it's just, it's, it's weird. Like, thinking about it is really, really weird, but it's, it's what you do, you know, it's like, yeah. Is there anything else that's a bit odd that you wouldn't quite expect? Nothing like crazy, just a bit odd. That's a really good question. Well, I mean, we have uh, circumcisions, which are like pretty <laughs> is there any, controversial. Uh, is there anything that related to that and why it ever came about? Uh, circumcision? Yeah. Uh, it just... I'm pretty sure it was, I think someone was circumcised as an adult to join. And it's like ever since then, we circumcise our baby boys at eight days old specifically eight yes yep unless there's been um other implications so like i had a cousin who was born um pretty premature can't remember how long but his circumcision wasn't till maybe like six or seven weeks after he was born and we so basically the circumcision until circumcision you don't know the baby's name the name comes out of the circumcision Oh, okay. So, like, I had this cousin. I didn't know why he was called for, like, six or seven weeks. You just had to refer to him as cousin. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, have a small list of things. Okay. That whenever I hear about Jewish, these things, like, pop to mind. Oh, okay. So I, I note them down. I, I, think I, can, I think I can guess what's coming up, but I'm... Um, these might be <laughs> not racist, but, like, I, I, I don't know what they mean. No, so, like, for sure. Let's do it. Not oh, obviously racist, but uh, they might be a bit... Mm-hmm. I, I'm naive. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is Mazel Tov? Okay, so Mazel Tov. <laughs> it's like congratulations, right? And where does that come from? It's just our way of saying congratulations. So, but you can use it in many different contexts. So say, I passed an exam. You'd be like, oh, Mazel Tov, or like, it can be used in any. If someone has a baby, Mazel Tov. If someone has a bar mitzvah, Mazel Tov. Married, Mazel Tov. But like. Is, I, I quite like when people use it sarcastically. Yeah. Like when like your friend shows up late and you're like, oh, Mazel Tov, you're finally here. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, yeah. All right. So it's, it's just generally thrown about. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's probably one that most non-Jewish people do know about. Yeah. Yeah. Because from like, cause I'm, like American TV shows definitely have yeah, it. Yeah, I've definitely heard it. I just didn't yeah. know the sort yeah, yeah, of for sure. relationship mm-hmm. between Jewish people and Mazel Tov. <laughs> Good pronunciation, um, by the way. I'm impressed. Thank you. I've been working on it. Yes. <laughs> um, is it true that Jewish people drank all the time? Or is um, that a really bad stereotype? Like, yes, it's true. In a way, I do think. Because everyone loves to have, like, a little, you know... A pe- they call it a lachayim. 
which so I... l'chaim means cheers in oh, okay right in, i don't know if it's so we have yiddish and we have hebrew yiddish is like a evolution of like german polish hebrew mm-hmm. russian all those kind of eastern languages um i don't know if it's i don't know what l'chaim is but it's cheers and like having a little l'chaim is like you know a little shot of whiskey or something right but to be honest we do have um so you know how in churches they have is it they have like do they drink like a little water like it's, it's like the blood of christ right wine. they just have wine wine yeah, yeah wine so like but like we actually have it's actually wine yeah i think they actually have wine, in ha- actually though, have wine? Yeah. Oh, okay well yeah we have um we have wine like usually all of our like synagogue services end with a thing called a kiddush which is um i don't know it's like a blessing when I mean, you all you always have wine usually which is every every saturday um every friday night <laughs> um that's a good question actually mm. you just reminded me of what day is a, a sort of like a Christian's is Sunday. Sure, sure. What is a, a Jewish? Is it's Saturday. So fri- Saturday. Friday night, Saturday. So sunset, Friday night, and sunset t- until sunset on Saturday. Right. Yeah. So 24 hour period that goes over two days. Yes. Yes. Interesting. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Other. Uh, mm, yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> um, meat and milk. Oh, this is a good one. You've you've done your research. I'm so impressed. So yeah, we don't mix. We have lots of dietary requirements which we follow. Um, so we don't mix milk and meat because you would never cook. Um, sorry to all the, these vegans out there. I think I know this. The phrase you're about to use. Yeah, you you would never um cook a child in its mother's milk. Yeah. Um. So you you're supposed to leave like a period of time in between eating milk uh, milk and meat. Um, lots of people have two sets of cutlery like in my house we used to i mean the laws are a little, we're a little bit more lax now but we used to have two sets of cutlery um yeah milk and meat set and same with a milk and meat yeah so you'd have one specifically for one type of meal yes. and then the other for another type of meal yes yep and right. many people like my grandparents definitely still do that um they have two sets of plates two sets of everything really you know and some people who even go, go even further have like two sinks. Really? Two, you can go even further and have two separate kitchens for milk and meat. It's pretty. That's in- interesting. It's pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is mezuzah? Okay, so this is a like I'm I'm so impressed. First of all, <laughs> like wow, and your pronunciation is so just like spot on. Um, so you've been you I don't know you you were around at my house like fairly recently, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I don't know if you noticed either of you. Like, I had a. We have little boxes. They're kind of like little oblong boxes, right? And it had a little, a little scribbling on I them. Did not. And they, oh, I did notice that. And they're kind of at a slant, and they're at on the post of every door. And what is that? So, it basically blesses um the the house. So we have one on our we have one on our front door still do. Uh, living room kitchen basically every room except the bathroom and it's it's got a little scroll inside that has a prayer called the shema now the shema is a prayer you say every single day you put your hand over your your eyes your right hand over your eyes and you say um you recite a little prayer that just says um you know blessed our god kind of stuff like that right. so yeah and that just and um whenever you ever see like a really religious person walking in and out of a room they will kiss their hand and then kiss the put it on the mezuzah as like a sign of respect. Right. So just like a little blessing almost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um. Why do people hold people up in chairs? Oh, so like it's just, it's just something we do. Personally, I've never been up on a chair before. You have never experienced. Not married. Never had a bar mitzvah. So why would you hold someone up in a chair? I don't know. Crazy Jewish <laughs> dancing, to be honest. Yeah crazy dancing. so is that more a cultural thing than a religious thing yeah right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a cultural observation for sure um and what's the the deal with dancing in circles again just a just a cultural yeah thing. i mean usually it'll be like women on one side and men on the other side because like let's not mix women and men because you know that's like a little bit of a gray area like what you- are your opinions on that okay so honestly i think it's pretty rubbish to be honest. like i don't I, I don't see the point of it you know, there's, it's, yeah, it just doesn't make much sense to me, to be honest. It's You see it as a little bit backwards. Very, very, and it's, 
it almost confuses me that people still follow that very much so to this day well, what's the reason is it as a, a hierarchy thing or is like, it just a yeah i i would i would say yes and no so it's kind of kind of a hierarchy thing but also you know no sex before we believe no sex before marriage mm. you know if you're religious and a classic religious trait yeah but that also goes into like you can't touch a man before you're married you can't even hold his hand so say you're dating someone you can't hold his hand like the first time you'll ever be physically intimate with someone or not even intimate just like physical with someone is when you're married to them right okay um and all situations in life uh like what do you mean um if you, so you wouldn't shake someone's hand when you met them no, for the first time no no so that is that that's actually a really good like thing you bring up because no um i've been in situations before where religious so i'll be in trying to think like in a synagogue and you know i'll be with my dad and my younger sister and Mm -hmm. we'll be standing and someone will come up and speak to my dad shake his hand come up to me my sister just like nod at us because you know you don't want to like don't touch a woman like ah if you were to go to shake his hand what would the sort of reaction i think they'd be taken aback they definitely wouldn't shake your hand though like insulted no just just... like they'd just be confused right they'd be like what's she doing yeah pretty much yeah for sure um that's definitely interesting Mm. so no sex before marriage what's the sort of view on like gay people in the in the gay community in the lgbtq um community like sin yeah like uh, yeah and like basically kind of same as christians so like a man may not lie with another man all that stuff so yeah it's pretty yeah would you say there's a lot of similarities between christianity and um yes and no the big fact that we don't believe in jesus so like like that, right. that that's like half of religion just like cut out but then so a lot there, of, was jesus not a figure and he, he so we only we, so there's the obviously the old testament and the new testament we mm-hmm. don't believe in the new testament right so when jesus was his figurehead we don't believe in that but but you do believe that he was a person. yeah 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 he right. i think i think he's referenced but i don't know what he's actually referenced as i think just like a normal person just to be some honest. guy yeah some guy just some guy that jesus people jc that's the one <laughs> the main man <laughs> that's the one um I have bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah. But yeah, we already covered that. So bat mitzvah is just a female equivalent. Yeah, so females usually have that when they turn twelve, whereas bar mitzvah is when you're turned thirteen. But because you have more a traditionalist approach to religion, you you didn't experience that. No, I I mean some Orthodox Jewish people do. Don't get me wrong; it's for sure a thing. But for just don't think really think it's necessary to be honest. Are you really? Have you ever like really struggled with your faith? Um, it's a deep question. Like. Like, I can never, right now, like, on, and honestly, I'm not a believer. I have, think, you, have you ever went, I just don't want to be Jewish? I don't want to be a, a like, I've never wanted, I've never said I've never wanted, I don't want to be Jewish, but I have, you know, mm. been like, right, enough's enough. I don't want to, like, be religious. Like, it's not, right. my, it's not my thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, And, you know, I do have religious friends and I speak to them and, like, we, like, they know that I don't follow, but. And I, but I would never go out my way to disrespect that. Like, like they how they choose to live their life is fine, and they treat me with the same respect. So, I'm like definitely thankful about that. Do you think that not just uh, the Jewish community, but all religious communities, do you think it can be a bit regressive sometimes? Mm, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's yeah, it's still like that. I mean, it's it's a very religion in general. It's like it's full of like. A- it's very aging you know it's very it's full of older people yeah so it'll be and interesting what happens what hap- when like all these old people do die out and like will religion still be a- well mainstream religion still be a thing maybe not like i don't know it just doesn't really fit the next generation almost it doesn't and i hate this term this like millennial generation <laughs> x term but it's true like it just doesn't most people just aren't raised like that or aren't believers you know have you ever uh, had a situation where you sort of take a step back and look at it and think this is not brilliant to be jewish uh, like an experience yes or... this is a, yeah oh for sure for sure i'm just gonna get some water before, <laughs> I, before, before i start on this this is getting deep mm. it's a serious one clearly it is it is a serious one but I, it's something that i don't have an issue talking about because i don't i think that it's important to i mean it's out there so like everyone knows about it and if they want to they learn about it so it was a cut. So uh, four years ago, I, I 
unfortunately lost my mum she was ill um and judaism have a horrible horrible mourning policy right it's like this just like completely just on top of going through losing someone it's hard right Mm, but then exactly and then you have to do all these things so if a jewish person dies their funeral is the next day it can it can be on the same day depending on how early they die which is just like crazy 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 mad so some people might think that's a good thing I mean, it's, part of me does think, yeah, it's great, but it's just a lot, you know, going I, on in your... I hate to interject on in, in this topic right For now, sure. but if it was in a situation where it could have been a potential murder or a case, mm. do they still get buried the same day? Do they have to have a really quick postmortem? And, and then... Like, I think that people that do the postmortems are aware that we have, like, certain... Because right. it's not... I think people who... I think Muslims also have follow this kind of next day, next day right. burial type thing. But I... It can take as if it takes so many weeks that's just how it has to go you know and the religious people do have to understand that so we have the funeral mm-hmm. and if you so if you're a mourner you have to stand at the front and you have to wear an item of ripped clothes to show that you're a mourner and that's just it yeah it's just a bit weird like having standing there and having someone like come like rip part of your clothes because to show that you're like look at this person they're already suffering so let's make them like just like stand out like a little bit more so do you rip it in advance no someone rips it for you at the funeral right okay and then you go back to your house and in your house you have to cover up mirrors tvs um you aren't allowed to look at yourself in the mirror um you aren't allowed to watch tv not allowed to listen to music not allowed to go to parties and this can all go on for like up to a year which is crazy how do you choose how long it goes on for? So it depends on the relation. So because it was my mum, um, like these sh- should have all gone on for a year. But um, if it's like husband or wife, it's like maybe six months. If it's like a brother or sister, it's shorter. Depends on how long you mourn for. Yeah, so you got the funeral and then you have this thing called Shiva, which means seven in Hebrew. Um, and that's, you have seven nights of prayers so people come over to your house, say prayers, and it get really busy, and you have to like talk to the, all these people for so mm-hmm. long, and then for seven nights, which is like still just like so just like draining, mm-hmm. and you have to sit on these small chairs really close to the ground because like you're not let's be comfortable because you're mourning. So like, basically, you know when people are mourning, they're like, oh, let's make them comfortable, let's just, like look mm-hmm. after them. Nah, like com- completely, like, complete opposite, which is just so crazy, and like funnily enough, like I have so one of my really religious friends, it was her birthday a couple weeks after. And yeah, you're not allowed to go to parties for a year as part of your mourning. You can't like, yeah, so you can't do that. And um, her, so we're all like sitting around the table, like about to eat dinner and her mum comes in and it's like, Sarah, come here. And I had to serve all my friends because I wasn't allowed to sit and enjoy myself because I wasn't allowed to be at a party. And I think everyone like, like some of my non-Jewish friends still talk about it. They're like, what the heck? Like that, that that's the thing. I'm like, yeah, that's the thing. So, that's definitely hard yeah for me to wrap my head around it's 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 really hard i think yeah i think that's what definitely a point where i mean it's only happened like four years ago but and i wasn't necessarily religious before but i, like, I still understood but like after that i think that was like a big like no 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 like it was just you know like a lot like clicked and i was like nah it's not for me so did you go the full year with your mirrors covered and no that? no 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 sorry the mirrors covered is only for the seven days it's okay. the yeah I, I, there, there's like certain time frames but i know the parties for a year right and like had i been a guy i'd have to go to synagogue every single day and say a prayer but for a year for a year but um because like the next meal was my dad so he actually did it but he's like like fairly he likes going to synagogue so it's fine but was your uh, dad raised jewish yes right. yeah i'm full jewish like i don't have any non-jewish relatives like in my like timeline because uh-huh. my family like half polish half russian came over um world war one and yeah all right how did your parents meet do you know i don't know it's a good question <laughs> well I, I, just, just through friends i think actually for jewish, jewish friends yeah right. jewish friends yeah this was this was a time where i think a lot of the jewish people just like stuck together i'm mm. get, i think they met like in the 80s <laughs> i want to say that brings me another question yeah. is the jewish community very tight knit is it very do they work very hard together the older people do yeah because yeah. they, they all grew up together but like a mm. lot of jewish people nowadays like my age and slightly older they move so like, do you have any jewish friends that you know 
that are local to you yeah i have a couple i have a couple um some some religious some not um but a lot of people do move to like london so the main hubs for like jewish people not even religious jewish people just like jewish people to meet other Mm. jewish people um so you got london leeds manchester birmingham as well like if you go to any of those unis you're probably going to meet a jewish boyfriend and get married at some point right like (laughs) that's just what you do Uh, you know is there a lot of jewish people in britain i don't i I just don't have the exact number but i think down south there's a lot more in scotland there's barely any like for example do you think i've met another jewish person in my life and just not known they were jewish or do you think it's very unlikely i think like where you're from probably not probably not i don't think so you've probably met someone maybe who has like a jewish dad if you have a jewish dad you're not jewish Oh, you're Jewish if your mum's Jewish. Oh, okay. Like this half Jewish thing's not really a thing. So, your if your dad's Jewish, mm-hmm. would he? So he would have to marry a non-Jewish person. And yet, no. So if your dad's Jewish and your mum's not Jewish, you're not Jewish. So if he married uh, the mum mm-hmm. who's not Jewish, is that allowed? Yeah. Uh, you can. Well, like, or is it kind of frowned upon? It's for sure frowned upon. I mean, I have cousins that have married out. And uh, yeah, it's definitely frowned upon, and right. I feel I feel bad because it shouldn't be, but because you know, like in all, like you get taught, like you marry another Jewish person and you like populate the earth with more Jewish people and more Jewish people. Like same with Christians or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but you're usually trying. To it's not. It's not yeah. feasible because like <laughs> most Jewish people that I know, I either grew up with or I just dislike immensely. <laughs> so it's probably not going to happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it's, it's definitely not going to happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. So would you consider yourself a non-religious jewish person culturally jewish yeah so culturally, culturally jewish. yes so yeah. what are the traits of a just culturally jewish what what are the not the benefits but what would what's different from your life than it would from mine not if you don't go mm-hmm. to a religious place if you don't mm. pray mm. some well, um you know we still have that like big like i'm like i'm honestly i'm really like proud of like my heritage and my culture you yeah. know and i've taken a lot of things from that so like a lot of the like the food like i really enjoy eating that stuff you know because right. <laughs> it's good food food's yeah. great but like there's nothing better than like just like jewish food like it's just like the best the best is there anything like in uh, muslim culture mm. where you have to go to uh, i forgot what it's called do you know what it's called Place. oh mecca mecca yeah um most people do go to israel mm-hmm. personally i'm almost 20 it's not all, you're not obligated right? no it's i mean not. i'm almost 22 and i've never been to israel would you go i'm going that later this year actually right but um for religious reasons no i'm going for um holiday uh, no for an event but <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> um yeah no there's nothing really i'm trying to think a lot of just people do move to israel eventually i do know people who have moved to israel people who will be moving to israel they do this thing called they make it's called aliyah which just means you just move to israel That's and live there yeah so israel is the holy land yes no like yeah yeah it is but not to me yeah to, to D- jewish people, to jewish people like traditionally yeah, yeah but not to me it's not it's like it's not it's not my homeland like i've never right. been there so i wouldn't go there and okay. be like i'm home you know fair enough yeah of course yeah so yeah um is there anything like is there any like jewish stereotypes that you want to clear up that are probably like just complete stereotypes that aren't true at all yeah for sure <laughs> yeah so like we're not out to steal your money that's totally a lie <laughs> like i remember once i was in high school and someone like dropped their money and they're like oh sarah stay back from that i was like wow wow but, like really like is that really so was it thing? that bad yeah did people genuinely believe it they thought that well, Jewish like, people would go out their way to... I think watching stuff watching stuff like Family Guy in South Park, definitely. Like, reference to these things, definitely. Kind of warp it. But it's not... Like, it's not true. We're not... And we're not all cheapskates either. <laughs> we do, like, they're like, oh, you're rich, but you have, like, so... You're rich, but you have... But you're, like, so cheap. But it's, mm-hmm. like, not true. <laughs> it, Where does the stereotype come from? I have no idea. I think it must have come from, like... Someone must have stolen money some once in the, yeah. in the past, you know? And then they were bigoted and held that against a Jewish person yes. for no good reason. Yes, yeah. you're definitely right. Sounds like every hatred ever. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. I'm trying to think of any other stereotypes. Um, people say that we're good business people. I mean... Again, back down to money though, isn't it? Yeah, it all, it all, it all comes back to money, that's the thing. Um, oh, there's a stereotype that I have curly hair. Can confirm, <laughs> do have curly hair so i mean must be true somewhere <laughs> um yeah usually they say oh you're all like super dark have like dark hair dark eyes 
well yeah both my parent parents had dark hair dark eyes and i do but my sister's blonde hair blue eyes so like where did that come from so that's a that's a stereotype or just like a generalization but yeah all right yeah Jeez, oh, non-stop. I, I feel know. like I've learned quite a lot and I don't know what to do with all this information. I know, I know. I'm trying to keep it contained in my brain. Um. So what else is going on in your life, Sarah? What else is going on in my life? So apart from being Jew-ish. Apart from being Jew-ish. Yeah, what else is going on in my life? Well, just work, to be honest. You know, I've done... It's been a... Oh, actually, going b- before we before we get onto that, actually... Um, We're back a, on to being Jew-ish. A stereotype. Uh-huh. Everyone you're expected to become like a doctor or a lawyer really yeah is it very strict like you yes so like i know quite a few people few Jewish people who have become doctors or dentists or law- like lots of lawyers lots of accountants going back to the money thing again <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you 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 do well in school you make your your parents proud and right you know going back to like me i mean my younger sister she's studying to be a pharmacist so she's kind of like keeping in with that but um yeah, I so, went went off the beaten path. Yeah, that's off. what I was going to say. You don't do anything remotely in no, those No, but I think that I went off the beaten path from Judaism completely in like every single way, shape or form <laughs> because like I don't, you know, I don't, I'm like without sounding like a complete idiot, like I just, I'd like a non-conforming person in general. Right. You know, yeah. like never really been like a, I think maybe that's why I kind of did regress from judaism to be honest you just don't follow the mainstream flow yeah i just you know i just don't look like your average per- i just never <sighs> like you know because like you grew up and you're like yeah like you look this way and this way and it's like i've never really fit the standardization fit the standardization yeah i just feel i just feel uncomfortable like generally around like religious people because i just don't fit like yeah you know i'm i dress pretty androgynously and that's how i choose to live my life but that's not a thing you know you're you wear, you wear a skirt all the time if you're a Jewish yeah. woman. I'm like, I can't really remember the last time I wore a... It's very, very strict yeah. female male roles. Yes. Do you think that religion can be a good thing? Uh, yes. Lissy said, do you think religion can be a good thing? Yes. Like, 100%. I think religion could be a great thing. I, just because my experiences, I don't think that... I just cause I've, I mean, I've not necessarily had negative experiences. Just experiences that have made me realise, you know, this isn't for me. But... It gives a lot of people comfort. You know, my grandparents are very devoutly religious and they they enjoy it. They really like it. And yeah. I've sp- I have friends as well that have told me like this is this is for me. Like, you know, they've been they've studied, they've gone to like seminaries in Israel, learned more about the religion and it's made them not necessarily more religious, but just more devout. Like and it gives them a lot of peace, a lot of comfort and I that's not something I, I think anyone should ever t- take away from a person. Like yeah. going down to like the basics, if religion's true or not, like I don't know. Like no one knows, right? But if it's a belief that makes someone feel better, fair enough. Fair enough. You know, if they're not doing any harm, yeah, why not? Absolutely. It's, sorry, that that was really long winded. <laughs> Lucy said, is there an afterlife in Judaism? I'm not saying this to you, by the way. I'm saying this because I don't know if the mic will pick this Ah, fair up. enough. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to reiterate Is to there you. an afterlife? Um, like, honestly, it's one of the questions that's never been answered to me. I don't know. Um, so I don't, I don't personally do believe in an afterlife, but I don't know. I, yeah, can't answer that. Like being Jewish in the afterlife? No. <laughs> Like, will I be Jewish in the next life? Oh, I think so. I think so. There's a heaven equivalent. Yeah. Probably I, just heaven, I, d- I guess. I don't think we have a hell, though. I'm not too sure. But yeah, I don't think we have hell. So if you sin, what do you really lose out on then? What's, what, what is the uh, but there must be a hell. motive I, for not sinning? I don't know. I don't. I can't. I can't answer that question properly. Like, I've never, no, no one's ever told me, oh, you're going to go to heaven, you're going to go to hell. Right. Like you know if i was if there was a heaven and hell i would make a good guess where i would be going but um yeah i don't yeah no answer <laughs> that <laughs> yeah same <laughs> um but to be honest like i've held like i've held a male's hand so like i would have been going to hell anyway right i don't i don't it's i don't i don't know i don't that. know if that's like a hell sense in to be honest yeah. but you know but it's definitely considered a sin of some sort yes right yeah is there like a code of conduct like uh what do the christians have the uh commandments oh yeah. yeah we have the ten commandments i actually sometimes do wear a ten commandment necklace but uh, today i have a 
Is that just for swag reasons, or is that no? Just I don't know. Just always worn a necklace. This this I've actually don't have one. So this actually says this is this is a it's a little off short to the camera. <laughs> um, it says Chai, which means life in Hebrew. <laughs> but yeah, man, it says hi. Like no, hi, you're sounds right. Cool. <laughs> uh, no, hi, which just means life. Don't know, just like it, just always wearing it, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, I read somewhere, and I think this is wrong because I read somewhere else that it's uh, very mm. untrue that Jewish people have to have a, like a symbol on them or like, uh, and I can't remember what the symbol was, but it's some sort of symbol that they kind of have to always have on them, like a necklace or anything. Is that well, like? Uh, you might have read that when you're re- possibly reading about the Holocaust, because yeah, in the Holocaust you had to have a symbol. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was, it was sort of oh, like, like a, uh, people do wear stars of David. I don't know if it was specifically star of David, but it was something to show was that it the hat. No, it was like a necklace. No, it was, it's not uh, a thing. No. And I th- kind of thought that was made up, or, or maybe it was like a really strict version of some like by religion or sub religion of some sort. No, I can't think of no. Nothing. No, no nothing. No, the only really other symbol. What's the hat? So there's many names for it just to keep it simple she's called like a keeper right it's a little round hat and males of course males wear it right um just shows that you're jewish really keep your head covered women do also have to keep their head covered if they are married so i don't know if you've heard but like a lot of religious women actually wear wigs no, uh, never okay never so if i was religious and i married someone i would have to shave not shave off my hair cut it really short i guess and wear a wig called a shaito and it's basically just like i know <laughs> i know so we're so weird name if you've never heard of it right um you know most most of them do wear wigs and um or or, or you can wear a hat but you, your head has to be covered because you only really show your husband that right and even when you go okay. to the, so even when you go to the synagogue if you're a married woman, you wear a hat to cover your... You just cover your hair. What kind of hat? Like, you know, like, when you see people, like... You, like a stereotypical Jewish hat? No. Did Jewish you did you, did you did you watch the Royal Wedding? No. <laughs> <laughs> did you... I've, 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 you've seen photos from the Royal Wedding, right? No. Have you? I'm not going to lie. I don't know who got married. Okay, next question. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So you you know you know like the kind of like you know you know when someone goes to a wedding you kind of wedding, wear, wear wedding hats. like a wedding I've hat. seen wedding hats. Sorry. Yeah, there. What's the name for it? Do you know. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you wear like kind of one of those hats if you're married. It's like you just like always. No, if you're on a on a on like, if you go to synagogue and you're married and you're not right. you're not like super religious, you just always keep your head covered. But if you are really religious and you keep your head covered all the time. Right. Uh, even if you're at home minding your own business no one else can see you mm, no you're fine then as long as any anyone can see it as long as it's no sorry as long as your husband as long as it's your husband yeah you have to keep your right wig okay. on i guess um a, a wig or a hat wig or a hat but yeah a lot of people go for a wig so yeah they wear a hat yeah but i mean you you can tell you can for sure tell. <laughs> like trust me you can tell all right is there a as god's just called god hashem okay that's new knowledge to me as well it's just that. it just means the same thing right. you know just hebrew for god yeah we're also awesome. believe that there is just one there, mm. there one god i mean there there is other names for god like but in like prayers but i it would feel like i would don't want to offend anyone by saying them because they're, they're they're holy words you only say these words and if, if you're saying a prayer you know it's just not right yeah. you know as a non-religious person it still doesn't feel right yeah you know so absolutely um yeah sorry that was a very long-winded yeah. answer to <laughs> um yeah so going back to you were saying about what what, what do i do yes. yeah so i didn't become a doctor or a lawyer no we i went, into the creative, went lands. In creative land which is like i mean jewish people do it i mean you know steven spielberg he's jewish yeah he makes spongebob aren't a lot of uh did you ask if he made spongebob steven spielberg did he not make spongebob no he didn't did he oh. who made spongebob who was that <laughs> steven spielberg made et oh man it wasn't it, it's i'm pretty sure another jewish person did make spongebob i don't know who made spongebob um, oh, i love spongebob though but yeah no the, see, the, can I'm, you give us a fact check on who made, <laughs> who made spongebob, SpongeBob? Um, but yeah, yeah, tons, isn't uh, Adam Sandler and yeah. everyone, every Steven person in Hollywood. Spielberg. Thank you. It's right. another Steven Berg. Steven Spielberg's definitely Jewish though. Basically, your second name has Berg on the end of it. You're probably Jewish. Yeah? Is that like a common trait? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's certain names you just see people and you're like, they're Jewish, they're Jewish. They're Jewish. <laughs> so Steven Hillenberg must be like, 
I would put my money on it. He'd be Jewish. I mean, I'm. Can you fact I, check? No, argue, I'm kidding. <laughs> fact check. Does he Jewish? No, it's um, yeah. Um, why do you think so many? Um, this is why I asked about sort of like the tight knit sure, community sure. because when you see like, Adam Sandler's Jewish, and then when mm. you look into it, everyone he works with is Jewish, and he and he's is it because he's helping it fellow Jews or Jewish people, or is it because I just think a lot of Jewish people are actors and like don't get me wrong, there are a lot of Jewish people are really successful, and I don't I don't know why that is, I don't know how that is. Do you think it's some sort of Illuminati stuff? Like no, don't want to get into some too too controversial. No, I don't. Think. I don't think it is. I just, New world order. I just think that a lot of people are just good at what they do. Anyway, yeah, I went to creative industries, and yeah, I I didn't go to university, which is is that sort of frowned upon almost. Not frowned upon. Just people are like just oh, expected. Just oh, I th- I think just like in the the area I grew up in, it was very just like unexpected. You know. Was he Jewish? Okay, yeah. Told you right. Sorry. Ooh. yeah i think i think I read a couple of years ago yeah so in the area i grew up in like just not you go to university that's it you get a degree i went to like a college for like six months dropped out hated it um just wasn't for me you know what did you go to study i studied film and tv but then you didn't you dropped out but then you went into film and tv yeah so right. i did a tra- traineeship with bbc which was like it was weird because, see, so I, I told everyone I wasn't going to uni and then I dropped out of college and everyone was like, you know, getting on my back. And then I got that BBC thing. Everyone's like, back on the bandwagon. I'm like, yeah, you're either there from day one or you're not. Like, yeah. make up your mind. But um, no OGs. I have, ha- I have got some OGs in my life. Yeah, I've so got some OGs. Shout out to those OGs because there are some... OGs, link in the description. They, they <laughs> know who they are. You know who you are. Um, yeah, so there is some people, but did that BBC thing, which was great um yeah. and you met some cool people did work with many cool people um any good stories any top secret stories you can't tell us absolutely Sorry, not. I'll, I'll keep it between Ooh. me and you <laughs> yeah and the internet um no i mean yeah i i really i learned a lot in yeah. those two years yeah i learned like more in one year even more than i can even imagine and then i worked for bbc for like a year and a half afterwards and then i left and now I have my own, I hate this word because it like goes back to this hor- horrible Jewish stereotype, business. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I did start out my own business in the end. Yeah, um, that's yeah. funny. And I'm a content creator and that's what I do and that's what I love. Um, so would you recommend for people going down the same sort of route as you of, a, of someone that wants to go into a creative business mm-hmm. to maybe not just go into the the standard route of mm. university or college mm. but maybe try and get some real life work done and go yeah. to and do an internship or a, yeah. or something like that yeah not gonna lie i thought your question was gonna be do you, do you recommend people convert to judaism if they want to start their own business <laughs> i was like no no definitely not but you know well if you don't do that fair enough um yeah definitely <laughs> definitely just don't go don't again as it i'm a very unconventional person mm-hmm. i'm very like high risk high reward type person and i just yeah just and it's working out for you so far so far yeah but that's without that that's that is with struggle like i'm definitely very fortunate that i've met good contacts and you know um i don't know i just i just really like it i just get such a kick out of being self-employed and being able to manage my own time and you know manage my own projects and being able to travel and all that stuff you know awesome yeah yeah so what's next Good question. Just um, you know, building on the business more, traveling more for sure, getting out, getting bigger projects in other countries. You know, will I move? Boy, probably. I mean, it, it might not be London, Manchester, Leeds, <laughs> <laughs> but it will be somewhere else. Sure, you don't want to go and join those Jewish communities. No, build yourself up. No, get to I mean, Sandler level. I mean, I don't think my wedding finger looks great without with a ring right now. So, <laughs> I think I'll wait. Um, but yeah, just just keep going we're, we're working on some projects as well oh yeah you know, we'll, we'll work on some projects yeah absolutely um and yeah just keep just keep doing what i'm doing anything you want to want to talk about anything you want to plug i at studio kale on instagram come check us out all your stuff will be in there amazing come check us out if you've got any questions just get in touch because i will be able to make your creative dreams come true like for real <laughs> it's not a joke it's it's real sorry i, I don't know why i laughed yes 
I agree. Yeah, or come hang out. Come, come have a coffee at the studio. You know, it's a cool place, and you can yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We covered everything. Yes. I happy. Think so. Yeah, for sure. I'm happy. I feel like I've learned quite a lot here. Yeah, I think a so. A lot of words that I'm definitely never going to remember, even though I can pronounce really well. I'm sure. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. No, thank you. If you have any suggestions for who should be on next, please let me know by just commenting below. If you're watching this on YouTube, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you're listening to it on SoundCloud, please remember to follow and like. Also, all of Sarah's stuff will be linked below, so please remember to check that out. And yeah, thanks for watching.